Andy Hillier is also with me here on set uh, from our international affairs desk. Andy, as we continue to watch these pictures, uh, one thing that I know you've been looking at is, is the importance of the D-Day commemorations as well and how they've changed over the years because they've almost become more and more poignant as, as time has gone on, haven't they? Uh, that's right, Stuart. Um, of course, the D-Day ceremonies really have, I, I think, you know, grown in importance over... Uh, over the last 80 years, uh, in, the, in the first 10 years, for the first decade, uh, it, I, there were there were commemorative events, but a lot of it happened uh, on a, a local level, if you like. Uh, 10 years after D-Day, the French president, uh, René Coty, he did attend the commemorations. He himself was a, a native of Lavre, so he was from Normandy. So for him, of course, what happened... Uh, on D-Day uh, and what happened during the Battle of Normandy uh, that lasted for three months, of course, really resonated with him. Um, famously, of course, Charles de Gaulle uh, in 1964, not present for the D-Day uh, commemorations. There was at the time, I think, this debate about uh, whether or not the French had been partially sidelined during D-Day by the British uh, and Americans. But the big turning point Definitely, I think, in 1984. That was when we first saw D-Day uh, as an international commemorative event with world leaders attending. Uh, this was when uh, the French president at the time, François Mitterrand, he invited six uh, heads of state, including U the US president, uh, Ronald Reagan, and the UK's Queen Elizabeth. Uh, the French president at the time used the event to underpin the importance of the transatlantic uh, partnership. This was in the context of the Cold War, of course. Um, and uh, this was also a very important event for Ronald Reagan. Uh, this came during uh, a re-election campaign for Ronald Reagan. And he, he made uh, what many have come to consider perhaps one of the most defining speeches of his presidency, which uh, practically launched his uh, re-election campaign in 1984. It was <coughs> a speech he gave at the Pointe du Hoc, of course, that uh, cliff, those series of cliffs that were taken by U.S. troops um, from German soldiers. And he, during his speech, he evoked uh, the, the, this idea of shared memory, this, 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 this idea of moral sentiment. And he tied it to the present, to the present day at the time, struggle uh, of the U.S. against the Soviet Union in the context of the Cold War. And, of course, Joe Biden will have that, will be bearing that in mind when he himself gives a speech at the same location at the Pont du Hoc, which he's scheduled to do uh, tomorrow. Uh, of course, 20 years later, in 2004, uh, the symbolism of D-Day changed yet again. Uh, this was the year when, for the first time, Russian President Vladimir Putin was invited to the ceremony. There was also, uh, for the first time, a German Chancellor also present, Gerhard Schroeder. We had those... Uh, very memorable images of the uh, French president, Jacques Chirac, uh, embracing Gerhard Schroeder, the pledges of friendship. So you can see how it's evolved over time uh, and changed in meaning.